Hey everybody, it's John and we are going to talk today on John's Briefs with Terry Johnson about how 911 can get you sent to prison. Let's talk about it. Today's video is brought to us by Firearms Legal Protection. Firearms Legal Protection is a legal defense program for lawful gun owners with a 24-7 emergency hotline and plans designed specifically for self-defenders. They are offering a discount on their plan to ASP fans, so hit the link in the description for that. So if you did not see the last video and you don't know who Terry is, I want you to go and watch the video. We'll put a, a card up there so that you can watch it. But what I really want you to remember is that Terry is a uh, criminal defense attorney in the Detroit area in Michigan. He is a subject matter expert. He is a nationally respected expert, not just in criminal defensive law, but in firearms and self-defense law. And uh, you did get to uh, work with a defendant and adjudicate a case yes. that uh, really hinged on a 911 call. Correct. And I want you to listen to this 911 call. We're going to cut to it. And I'm going to let you listen to the whole thing. And I want you to ask yourself this question. Why did this person use deadly force? And was this deadly force justified from the 911 call? crazy. What do you think? Was that a, a, a justified use of force from the 911 call? I'd listen to that and it sounds like no. Why? Well, you know, if, if you listen, think about it. You know, when can you use lethal, lethal force? Okay. And it's pretty common across the, across the board. You have to be in imminent fear of what? Death, great bodily harm, uh, criminal sexual conduct, commonly known as rape. Yep. Um, this person didn't say this is the reason that they shot their son. Why? Because they 
disrespected the house. He disrespected the house. Why'd you shoot him? He disrespected, disrespected the, the house. house. Uh, that doesn't sound like objective, reasonable evidence of a deadly threat. No, it doesn't on first listen. Well, and then they said, they said, sit down or I'm going to shoot you again. And you're like, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, now we've got another threat that right. they've got to got to deal with. You know, and, and the, the other, I'm sorry, John. No, go ahead, go ahead. The, the, the other part about that was, you know, you're, you're listening to this. And the first time I heard it, I'm like, wow, how do you defend this? <sighs> this is tough stuff, right? It's very tough. Okay, so you said, gosh, it's really not. But we don't know the whole story yet. So tell us what the actual story was here. The story behind the story, and, and this is true, this is not some made up, you know, um, story to get my client out of a situation. My client had had open heart surgery 90 days prior. Mm. Now, you heard the voice, and some of you may believe that that is a uh, woman talking that shot her son. That's not the case. That's actually a man. Um, that you hear on the 911 tape. It wasn't Mike Tyson, but a man though. Yeah, and and as a res he had open heart surgery 90 days prior to this, wow. and as a result of the open heart surgery, his vocal cords were scarred. That's why he sounds the way he does. Hmm. Um, the interesting thing about this is um, my client um, was about 48 at the time. His son was about 20, and the mother was, um, my client's mother was in her 70s. And it was really agreed upon because she's getting older that the 20 year old would come and help out. And things just weren't working out at that at that particular house. So dad came over a couple of times before and said to the son, hey, kick behave. rocks, dude. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know better. This isn't how I raised you. So doing stuff like smoking weed in the house, chasing women, stuff like that. Well, the things I don't want to say a normal 20 year old would do, but I'll say some things that a 20 year old would probably do more often than an older adult. And that a 70-year-old grandma may not appreciate. Exactly. Uh, on this particular day, you know, Dad goes over, he talks to um, the son, and uh, the son just was in that mood. Mm. And the son uh, disrespected his father. How? He hit his father right in the chest. So, so he knew Dad had had open-heart surgery less than 90 days before and punched him in the chest. Does that yep. sound like a reasonable, objective evidence of a deadly threat? Absolutely. To him, for sure, right? He, he could could have killed him. Easily. Um, Dad stepped back, pulled his gun, told son, stop, stop, stop. The son stopped. Dad holstered his firearm. Now, Dad was a licensed, uh, you know, permit holder. And guess what? He's trying to talk to his son again. Words were exchanged. The son hit him a second time. A second time. And uh, Dad... Pulled, up, pulled his gun, shot him in the leg. Now, again, as a license holder, he knows the proper place to shoot it, you know. Should have shot him in the middle, you know, put it on high center chest, but... But it's his son. His son. He doesn't want to kill him, um, so he shot him in the leg. Then he made the 911 call. Mm. Now, knowing this story, I I'll tell you, and a lot of people don't understand when you call 911 what happens. Um... You will not be calm if you're in the middle of an event. <laughs> of course not. He's freaking out on the on the call. You can hear it. Oh, yeah. And, and now let's think about it. Is everything he said on the tape true? Yes. Did he shoot his son? Absolutely. Yes. Did he tell him to sit down before I shoot you again? Now, the story behind that, I believe the son was coming to attack him again. Yeah, pulls up, balls up a fist to hit him again. Yeah. Sit down or I'm going to shoot you again. And then what else? You know, the, the part was the son disrespecting the house. Yes, but that's not the reason. But again, in the... Mm. In the trench, when you're in that 911 conversation, you're not calm. You're not thinking. What's happening is adrenaline is running through your system. Mm -hmm. As that adrenaline runs through your system, it's got to get out some way. Whether you run, walk, whatever, talk. And most of us want to talk our way through things. That's how we get that adrenaline out. Unfortunately, we have a tendency to say things that may be true, but can completely hurt you legally. Well, you get what they call logorrhea. You know, you're just, it comes out of your mouth and there's nothing you can do. Yep. So what was the final outcome of this case? Unfortunately, um, my client ended up taking a plea. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason he took a plea, even though the son came forward and said, listen, I want to tell you what happened. The prosecutor in this case did not accept the son's um, version because he felt that he was just trying to help his dad. Mm -hmm. Now we could have gone to trial, but the stakes were extremely high. And on one end, if my client would have um, 
going to trial and lost. He was facing a mandatory minimum of two years in prison on one charge. On one charge. And then he, the clock would start over on the rest. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing on the very high end. The other part about that is he didn't want to put his family through it, you know. There was division in the family, you know, he wanted to make up with his son, and he took the hit, per se, um, with two felonies. He could never own or carry a firearm again, um, all for protecting himself. But more importantly, it was that 911 tape that really launched this whole case into something that he never expected. If he just would have called and said the proper things, none of this would have happened. I think that's the, the, the right way to think about this from here. Let's think about what the proper things are to say. Now, of course, there's going to be some discussion among various experts about what the right thing to say is and to whom and those kind of things. But I, uh, something that, that Terry taught me that I didn't know is that when you dial 911 in the United States, the second it starts ringing, it is recording. Before the 911 operator picks up, it is being recorded. Yes, and so, I, I can't tell you how many times, John, I've had clients, you know, you hear the 911 tapes and it's ringing. I had one guy, he was a drunk driver and he had someone else in the car and it was ringing and he said, John, tell him you were driving, okay? I mean, that was recorded because people don't know, like you said, that... You know what we call that? On. An admission. That's what we call that. <laughs> exactly. And it is admissible in court because it wasn't a coerced statement. So that is absolutely discoverable. Of course it's discoverable and it's admissible. So you're not going to get away from that. So what do you recommend to people that they say to 911? It's very simple. It's very straightforward. First thing you want to do, you want to pick up your phone and you want to say, there's been a shooting at, give the address and hang up. Now, one thing I want you to do with this, much like you go out to the range and you practice your breathing, you practice your sight alignment. You want to practice this as well. Don't call 911 directly and say, hey, I'm just practicing, okay? You don't want to do that. What you want to do is say, there's been a shooting at, give the address, and hang up. Why? Because it gets in your muscle memory, okay? You want to do it again and again because when you're in that situation, you've already trained for it. Why do I say that and nothing else? It's real simple. If you start saying things like, it was a self-defense shooting, or I feared for my life, you're now throwing out legal arguments in a time where, number one, you're probably not a lawyer and don't understand them. Number two, you're giving facts and things you shouldn't. Never say, I shot, because that puts you in a certain position. If you say there's been a shooting, maybe you're looking out the window in your neighbor's house and you see a shooting, and you're the one that's calling. Again, there's been a shooting at, give the address, and hang up. Call your attorney. Hopefully you call Firearms Legal Protection, and we'll have an attorney out there for you right away. But again, remember, call, there's a shooting, hang up. So then I, I'm going to guess 911 is going to return that call real fast. Do you just ignore it? You know, my ringer is always off, it's so always off. I don't know who's calling me. So, so again, the, the right answer is to say the right things to the right people at the right time. And in that, that minute after a defensive shooting, you have just been through the worst moment of your life. You've made it through, but your adrenaline is absolutely peaked. Your brain is absolutely scrambled. You want to say the very minimal thing because literally every word you say is being recorded and will be played in the court of law. And used against you. And used against you. And so we say, there's been a shooting at this place. Do you recommend maybe say send police and send paramedics and then hang up? Or I, My recommendation is that's something else you have to think about. Okay. I just want to keep it to a three-step process. There's been a shooting at... Give the address and, and hang, hang up. up. There you go. Simple as the day is long. You know, that 911 call that we played earlier, I think is really instructive because he didn't say anything that was wrong, but because of the, the mental fog, it put him in a place where he ended up having to take a plea agreement with what otherwise really should have been a slam dunk justified use of deadly force. Absolutely. And and he shouldn't have ever even been there. If, if he hadn't had that 911 call... I don't think the district attorney is going to be in a place that he feels like he can get a conviction for anything and probably this whole thing goes away. So, ah, man, we see stuff like this. These are the kinds of things that we want to bring you on John's briefs. And, and Terry, thank you so much for the information, man. Um, any place we can go to get more information on this? 
Absolutely. Um, I would go to firearmslegal.com backslash ASP. Again, that's the place to go to get protected for the fight after the fight. Sounds good. See you guys soon.